Hey, hey, family. Welcome back. Marshawn Alanio here, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling her understood and appreciated within your relationship. Now, my mission, my mission is to decrease the divorce rate by simultaneously increasing the marriage rate one conversation at a time. And that is why I am offering you a free 30-minute consultation. Go to www.marshawno.com and sign up for your free consultation, for your free um, call with me so we can get you on the path from where you're at today to where you really want to be in your relationship. Now, we're going to talk about how to stop being so critical. Are you the critical one or are you with the partner that is very critical. Now, if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you are the person that criticizes all the time and you're trying to figure out how to stop doing those things. Well, I'm going to give you three tips on how to stop doing those things. And keep in mind, sometimes we just do these things unknowingly, but I, I am bringing about an awareness with you here today, which is why I am ready to have the conversation with you and you should be ready to take in the information. And again, if this is something that you know that you need help with, Go ahead and go to www.marshawno.com and sign up for your free 30-minute consultation. Okay, so the first way to stop being so critical is to literally start asking as many questions as possible. I remember when I was first dating my husband, and I still do this to this day, but I totally remember when I was first dating him and that getting to know stage. So I would just ask a plethora of questions. Now, because I know that men have a tendency to get overwhelmed by question after question after question after question, I would strategically, yes, I said strategically because I am a life and relationship strategist. So I have a strategy in there, right? <laughs> so I would be very strategic with the questions that I asked, number one, and then the timing of the questions, number two. And the timing is really meaning that even if I had a list of 10 questions, I know that on that particular date or um, uh, during the dating process or even in our marriage now, I know that even if I have a list of 10, que 10 questions, I will not be asking my husband all 10 questions in one setting because most of the time my questions are very thought provoking and deep. So I know that that can be very emotionally draining for most men. Now, some men, they're ready, they're ready, they're ready. But my husband is one that he gets very emotionally drained or he might be trying to figure out, whoa, whoa, what's your angle, right? So if you're dating someone, right, but you heard all the time that you can be a very critical person, do not ask a plethora of questions like back to back to back, like it's an interview. What you want to do is take your top two or three for that particular date, the thought-provoking, serious questions, right? And then ask those. They don't have to be back-to-back, -back, but ask those questions. If you're in your relationship, ask the questions, right? Make your list, obviously. Then pick out two or three. Ask the question. You can either go from top to bottom or bottom to top. Literally, just make it as simple as possible. And just take the questions. Obviously, you want to get all your questions answered, but you don't want to necessarily do it all at one time. So allow your spouse, allow your partner to ingest the conversation, to take it in, to think it over, to think about solutions if you were talking about a solution or a type of question, right? You don't want to overwhelm your spouse, but how you literally stop being so critical about your spouse, about the things that he or she is doing to you or, or you, that you feel that they are doing to you is to ask as many questions as possible. And that's totally what I do still to this day because you're forever getting to know who your partner is. And so because I'm forever trying to get to know and understand as much as possible on the deepest level possible to understand and know my husband, I'm constantly asking thought-provoking questions. Like the other day, I just found out that um, um, he has a fear of snakes. Don't tell him. But he has a fear of snakes, right? Snakes, snakes is not his thing. Like he probably would run if he seen a snake and we were both out like taking a hike or something. I probably literally that moment I would have to fend for myself. But because I know this about him, um, it's not that um, 
too far-fetched, right? And I wouldn't be upset because I know that he has this fear of snakes, right? So he would literally be probably thinking about him and only him. But because I know that, I would also have to do the same, right? <laughs> In order for me to survive and not get bit and all that other stuff to go down the wayside. So if you're a very critical person, or if you have heard that you're a very critical person, one of the ways to stop doing that in your relationship is literally to get to know your spouse deeper. And how you're doing that is by asking a multitude of questions. Again, not all at one time, not all on one date or in one session, whatever, but you do still want to ask the questions. The second way to do this is literally to create time to connect emotionally because the more connected that you are with your spouse, the more questions that you're asking, the better the understanding that you have with the person that you're in a relationship with. And all of those things that he or she is doing to you that annoy the crap out of you will literally not bother you as much. You won't be as critical because you know who he is or who she is. You'll know their story. You'll understand why they show up the way that they do why she's antsy, why she's clingy, why his voice is so loud and powerful and strong when he's talking about something, right? So just asking the questions. And when you're asking the questions, this literally could be one of the times that you guys are um, creating the time to emotionally connect. Most of you don't think that they have the time because life, 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 right? But something in life is always going to come up. You still need to find time to connect with your spouse. One of the ways to do that emotionally is by asking those thought-provoking questions, is by sitting there and listening to the story that he or she has to tell you based off of them answering the question that you just asked. Not interrupting. Allowing him or her to get out everything that they need to say without you interrupting them because nine times out of ten they're going to answer the very question that you have if you just listen and not interrupt and if they don't guess what now you guys can further connect and talk about it because now you got a follow-up question right but it's st you still want to give your spouse the energy the space to open up to share and this is where that deep connection is coming from it's through speaking it's through stories it's through you just allowing the space to just let your um, spouse just open up and be free as well as you feeling like it's safe where you can open up as well so allowing time creating time 10 minutes 15 minutes per day to have a conversation to figure out what's going on and it doesn't you have to change it up it cannot just be how was your day right so what I usually do is I say you know what baby I was actually thinking about this and then that's when I insert said question thought provoking question so I can hear what he has to say it, it doesn't have to be super deep all the time right it can be something that I heard and then I just want his opinion on right so we just passed an election well a lot of our conversations was about the um, um the election or the orange man that just left the office like you just want to hear what your spouse is thinking right and then you guys can connect through that but in that you still want to hear their story how they grew up what scares them who hurt their feelings what they feel about relationships what they feel about marriage what does that actually look like what was their parents' relationship and or marriage like, right? Because you can get a lot of information, a lot of pertinent information based off of your background as well as your partner's background. You just got to listen. And then, you're, then you'll recognize some of the behaviors and habits that your spouse has and is doing where it came from just have to pay attention and allow the space for your spouse to be free, open, and not feel like they're going to be judged by you. So create the times to emotionally connect. 
The third and final point is literally to decrease your complaints. I know it's easier said than done because most of us can focus so much better on the negative versus focusing on what's right or what you can actually improve on because relationships are a journey. They are a marathon. They are not a sprint. And so if you want to get to that relationship that you secretly dream about, that you're secretly longing for, then guess what? You have to do the work day in and day out. And so most people think that the work is something big and scary. No, it's you having the conversations. It's you laughing about something. It's you, uh, you know, playing around, running around the house. Right. As well as taking care of the serious conversations that need to happen. It's everything coupled together is how you're creating the relationship that you're in currently. And so if you are the person that has been told that you are very critical. You have to literally just stop doing it. Yes. Easier said than done. But just like it, it, it took you a while to really embed that bad behavior with inside it's going to take you a little while to release that bad behavior as well so bringing your consciousness and awareness of what you're doing is how you're going to change your relationship around that's how you're going to change your relationship around that's how you stop becoming so critical is you realizing in the moment or right after oh oh i criticized him or I criticized her that's something I'm working on. Go back and apologize, right? And then do better next time. That's it. It's easy, right? It is easy. What I just said is not is not hard to do. I'm sorry. It is easy, but it can be hard to implement. It can be hard to be aware of it, especially in that in that moment. But you have to decide. I'm going to do this no matter what. Because I don't want to be a critical person. That is not going to bring my partner closer to me. That's actually going to keep us apart. And at some point, the partner is going to be looking for the exit. Because nobody wants to feel like they're being criticized and have to feel like they're in a battle with their spouse or partner day in and day out. It gets old. And trust me, it gets old real quick. Now, if you need some help with this, I opened it up with mentioning the free 30-minute conversation. Let's do it. Go to www.marshawnold.com. Sign up for your free 30-minute conversation. I look forward to helping you and also for you to help you. If you're serious and ready to help you, reach out. Let's do this because I am serious about decreasing the the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. Again, that's one conversation at a time. One conversation at a time. And that conversation starts with you and I. So if you are ready, www.marshawnoh.com. Sign up for your free 30-minute call. I look forward to speaking with you. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And I will see you next time. Bye now.